hey guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome my name is Nima so as you guys can probably already tell today I'm reviewing the Fenty Beauty pro filter foundation in the shade 490 I have this bad boy here but before that I want to go ahead and mention this past weekend we hit 300,000 subscribers here and I just want to say thank you guys so 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 much for all the love that you guys have given me I am going back to New York here in a few days and when I come back I'll probably be announcing the giveaway that I will be doing and all that good stuff so if you are new make sure you stick around and if you aren't I'm so excited to finally be doing this giveaway for you guys I'm not going to ramble too much. I'm going to go ahead and talk about this foundation. I will be doing a full review of other products from the line tomorrow. So I'll have this video up today and then tomorrow I'll have the other products like the Trophy Wife. I'm so excited to see what Trophy Wife looks like on my skin tone. So if you are excited about that, make sure you stay tuned and check that video out as well. It should be up tomorrow. So the foundation claims to be a medium to full coverage for all, long wear, and light as air. Besides swatching it and blending it into my hand, I have not put it on. I think you guys saw it on my Snapchat. If you don't have me on Snapchat, make sure you head over there. My Snapchat is Nima22. And I swatched it and all that good stuff at the launch party. It's definitely a lot darker than it looks like in the bottle. The bottle looks like this is definitely not going to work, but it's a lot darker in the actual bottle than what it looks like outside the bottle so i did go ahead and get a few samples of other shades i did notice that this foundation when i was swatching it does oxidize a little bit so i'm going to go ahead and swatch i think the last four shades on my hand while i'm blending it in and see what the oxidization looks like on all four of them so you guys can see that as well maybe that'll help if you haven't already picked it up help you pick out your shade so here are those shades here the shades right here is 490 then we have 480 470 and then 460 and this is what they look like before they've gotten a chance to dry down. While I'm applying this foundation, I'm going to see if they, how much they do oxidize and I'll have a side-by-side -side picture of what that looks like. I did get the primer, so I will be using it with the primer today. This is the Pro Filter Primer and it says it's going to be smooth, pore diffusing finish and extended extends makeup wear. This sponge, I honestly feel like it's very similar to a beauty blender. Obviously the shape isn't the same, but the texture and the squishiness that I'm getting is very similar to it. This was $16, the primer was $32, and the foundation is $34. On one side I'll use the sponge, and on the other side I'll use the brush. This brush was $34, so basically the same price as the foundation. Um, I have seen some people use it and it seems like this brush is really nice. I just don't know if it's worth the same price as the foundation, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump this bad boy onto my face. It says to use the sponge damp for medium coverage and use it dry for full coverage. I prefer to use the sponges um, damp so that my sponge right now is damp. So that's what that foundation looks like right now. I am getting more of that maybe light to medium coverage, but of course that's because I'm using it damp. I'm gonna go ahead and just put on a little bit more, see if it's a little bit buildable. It definitely looked like this brush literally just soaked up the foundation. As you can see where the dots are, it kind of just stayed in place. So this sponge might not be the best sponge for doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and try and see if I can apply it with the brush on the other side and see if that does a little bit better. Definitely a lot more coverage. And it dries down very quickly. Be very, very quick with your <laughs> blending. But I feel like I'm getting a lot more coverage and a lot more application, I mean, um, smoother application, which is weird because I love my sponges. I never use a brush for a liquid foundation.
This is what the foundation looks like right now. Definitely set. It's not sticky. It's not wet. It doesn't feel wet at all. It feels like it's set already with powder and everything. So this is what those shades look like dried down. This is the 490 again. And then this is the 480, 470, and 460. All of them dried down. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a side by side of what they look like before they dried down. Instead of using the blotting powder, because I think that's used for a specific purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and use it use my RCMA no color powder even though I really really feel like it doesn't need it but I also don't want to take away from the fact that if I start sweating or if I start getting hot during the day that extra layer of powder could have protected it from breaking down so I don't want to make it have it miss out on that so I am going to go ahead and try and set it real fast all right so this is what my face looks like right now I'm going to go ahead and wear this foundation for the rest of the day and I'll come back in the end of the night and I'll tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like about this foundation Alrighty, guys so I am back this is what my face looks like right now. I've had this foundation on for about seven hours, seven and a half hours. I definitely feel like it gave me a really smooth uh, finish and it applied really nicely with the brush. Unfortunately, the sponge for some reason didn't really work as much as I would like it to, but I think maybe it's because the foundation is um, a lot more on the waterier side than other foundations where they're a little bit more heavier. I think it just kind of soaked right into the sponge. I am going to try it out tomorrow with a beauty blender and see if that works a little bit but this brush I love Fenty Beauty launched with 40 different foundation shades which is pretty awesome not a lot of companies launch like that for me it's amazing to see because some companies even still to this day I still can't wear some of these companies foundations so for Fenty Beauty to come out with a bang 40 different shades and it's something that I could actually work with I am very happy and very pleased to see that um, the foundation, the 490, is it does oxidize a little bit darker. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys can probably tell how a little my face is just a little bit darker than my chest, which is something that I don't normally get too often. Do I feel like this foundation went as dark as the skin tone of my face? No, but it did go darker than my chest, which is normally where a lot of foundations cut off. They cut off right around my chest area and that'll be it it almost reminds me of the Lancome tint that I dull foundation I'll go ahead and swatch them and compare it to other foundations that I really like all right so here are a few of those swatches this first one right here is the Fenty Beauty then I have the LA girl then I have NYX I have the Urban Decay right here and then this is the Lancome it's not quite as red as these two but it's not quite as um, neutral as the Lancome. The finish on this foundation is amazing. I absolutely love the finish on this foundation. It feels like I didn't even need to set it. I went ahead and set it anyway so I can give it a fair chance. Um, I feel like it's definitely long wearing. I've had it on for seven and a half hours now and I'm not nowhere near as shiny as I normally get. It has not broke down on my mouth area. I feel like I still got that natural glow to my skin. But I will blot my face with the Invisimat blotting powder just for the purpose of testing out multiple products so you guys can see how they, how they work. So with the blotting powder, from what I can see, it definitely canceled out the shine and it seems like there is no flashback. The primer, I think I could have definitely lived without. I will insert a flash test of the primer because when I first was applying the primer, I don't more normally like a primer that has a tint to it and it kind of had like a pinkish tint to it and it came off a little bit gray. So I was afraid that it was gonna come through the foundation and have some sort of gray cast or flashback. I will insert a flash test. That was not the case. It did not have any gray cast or flashback. Is it my most favorite primer? No but is it something that I could possibly work with because it is more of a moisturizing primer? Yes, definitely, especially if you have dry skin like me. I liked this foundation, you guys. When I went to Sephora to go pick up this foundation, I saw other uh, dark skin girls in Sephora getting matched in this foundation and it literally melted my heart because it was so awesome to see such a huge launch probably one of the biggest launches of the year and there was girls in there that looked like me that were able to get matched for it. It was amazing and that's something I really really appreciate. I love the fact that this product was available to so many people so fast. Overall, I'm really happy with this foundation. Is it a foundation that I will keep wearing? Definitely. Um, I still feel like I got 
my glow, which I prefer. And it wasn't heavy, it wasn't cakey. But I think that's all I have for this foundation. If you have not done so already, make sure you are subscribed and give this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna go ahead and review the rest of the products tomorrow, so come back and check that video out tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of love, and I'll see you guys next time.